if you're passionate about something, you believe in it, you can envision it, but maybe others don't. Don't let that preclude you from taking the first step. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello, everybody. Neil Ball here. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, the failures and the successes. I'm so excited to bring you our special guest today, Jim Sweeney. But before I introduce you to him, I'm just going to give you a little bit of something to think about. You can tell whether a man is clever by his answers. You can tell whether a man is wise by his questions. That was said by Nagub Mahfouz. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insight, inspiration and ideas to apply in our business. Jim, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of The Entrepreneur Way with us? Mr. Neil Ball, thank you for having me. I am buckled in and ready to go. And yes, I am ready to share uh, whatever questions you pepper my way. Awesome. Thank you. Jim Sweeney has crafted his digital innovation to become the first universal animated brand in sports. He envisions his trademarked Mike Alter Ego sports personality to eventually be seen and heard on network television and jumbotrons. Jim enjoys an incredible start in digital media by penning over 750 blogs and publishing 37 Mike Sports comics and monetizing them via numerous affiliate links housed within them. Sounds fascinating and I can't wait to find out more. Jim, can you provide me with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow the listeners to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Well, my personal life is such that Uh, I was very successful in some previous businesses. Uh, The last one my wife and I had started from scratch and our best year, our annual revenues exceeded $52 million in sales, but it was a boring business. Uh, We had very little, you know, personal reward in reporting to work every day. And even it got to the point in cashing our paychecks at the end of the week or at the end of the month you know, when we, when we would pay ourselves Mm -hmm. and we got to the point where we wanted to do something different, something bold, something courageous, something totally outside of the box. And over a period of time, it led us to, uh, eventually segue out of a previously prosperous business to start something new and something totally different, which is digital content creation. Mm -hmm. And one of our properties that we've created is my Mike cartoon sports character. And Mike is short for Mike Raffone. He is what he's named. He's a microphone whom we call the ultimate talking head on sports. And he was birthed with me 58 years ago in Trenton, New Jersey. And I felt like Mike has always coursed through my DNA and I just needed to bring him to fruition. And, you know, you had referenced the man with the unpronounceable last name to kick off the show. (laughs) And, you know, You said you're going to ask the tough questions or the questions uh, that'll elicit responses from people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thank you for asking that. You know, what is my background? What's been my journey as that man with the unpronounceable last name had said? Yeah. And getting Mike to where he is today and where he'll inevitably go has been a journey. It's not been a sprint. It's not been a short race. It's not been something that could be quickly done. It's taking a whole lifetime of experience and dedicating myself to it full time because the making of Mike and developing content is my full time gig. Mm-hmm. And it's been a journey and it's a journey that I've loved. Hasn't been easy, hasn't been perfect, but it's a journey and I've grown to love it. Sounds absolutely awesome. So what sorts of things are you doing with Mike? Can you just give us a bit more about some more information on that? I mean, obviously you've had him in blogs and you've, you've, you've obviously published in comics and things. So can you just enlighten yeah, us a bit more? The ultimate goal with Mike is to get a licensing deal with a major international sports network, Mm -hmm. like an ESPN, a Fox, an NBC, a BBC, uh, or whatnot. 
Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I needed to build brand equity with a character. Uh, Very few of the major networks would even talk to me if I didn't have some type of, you know, digital assets that I had compiled or some type of a following that I was able to build up. Mm -hmm. So knowing that my inevitable goal is to create whom I believe will be the first ever animated brand to transcend all sports is I needed to get a start in digital publishing. I needed to be able to do a blog to get the image and likeness of Mike out there through not just static images, but through Mike's word. Uh, Because I write all of my blogs, now 771 of them through the voice of Mike. Mm -hmm. And because Mike's a funny man, he's witty, he's clever, You know, he sees the forest from the trees and sometimes sees a lot of the stuff through his lens that other people don't see Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, people are attracted to him. People like his voice. So in addition to the blogs, I've also now just this week, I'm publishing my 38th sports comic book and all my comic books are digital. They're available either on Amazon or on my own website, which is themike.com. That's T-H-E-E-M-I-K-E.com. Mm-hmm. And in the books, uh, I utilize sports comics to be able to tell some type of a story about an athlete, a play, a moment in sports, a stadium, a sports expression. And we've done exceptionally well in getting uh, our electronic books out there, either through Amazon or through my own website. Mm-hmm. So what I am doing is actually building you know, digital metrics. I'm building value in terms of how many impressions of Mike are out there in cyberspace. And eventually that will make me a lot more palatable to a major sports network that will want to sign us, uh, you know, to a licensing deal so that they could utilize the image and likeness of Mike Mm -hmm. for whatever they endeavor to do with it on their network. Wow. That sounds awesome. It sounds like you've really thought a lot about this. So Jim, what do you enjoy most about what you do? It's the content creation. Mm -hmm. It's being able to come up with things that are witty, clever, outside the box, that maybe 50 other sports writers, when they're doing a blog, they're going to cover the brass tacks, the blocking and tackling. They're going to cover the scores, the statistics, the standings. And I'm going to talk about something that's totally different uh, that I learned as a result of watching a game or following a player or a game. And I want to be able to be different. I want to be a little bit eccentric, but also I want to have the credibility in writing through the character that he sees things through his own lens in the sports world that maybe others had, uh, have missed. Mm-hmm. And he also provides value by educating us on that or giving us a belly laugh at something that maybe others would have missed when they were looking at the same thing that, that I was in writing through the voice of Mike. Mm-hmm. And how, how do you create all this create this content? Because obviously there's, there's, there's obviously graphics and things involved in this. So do, do you do that yourself or do you get someone else to help? I don't do it? any of the graphics myself. Uh, otherwise, Mike would never be able to get out of my office. Mm-hmm. Um, the team for our organization that has birthed Mike and done all this content is me and my wife. And this is the third time we've worked together in an entrepreneurial endeavor. You know, we met. Uh, in, at the university back in 1977, been married almost 35 years. Mm-hmm. So we're the only employees of our corporation called New Vision Entertainment. But what we've done is that, and this is purposeful on our on our side, on our end, we've had other businesses where we employed people. We feel because the entire paradigm of, of media as well as business in that in certain regards has shifted and changed that we can have people that work for us, but there aren't full-time employees of ours. There are work-for-hire employees where we could hire them on an hourly basis, a daily basis, a weekly basis to do certain things that they do for us, but yet if they help us create something, we retain the intellectual property rights of that song, that music, you know, that sports comic, that animated clip, or, you know, the... um, umbrella of the Mike property mm-hmm. always remains ours and we're the 100% IP or intellectually pro- intellectual property rights owners. That's fantastic. Yeah, so I ha- we have an artist, we have an animator, we have sound guys, we have a production team, we have some legal people, 
and we have some go-to web people that we employ, but I say that, you know, with asterisks, you know, they're not necessarily our, empl- our employers, but we pay them on work for hire projects or assignments. Mm-hmm. So it's like outsourcing everything to these people. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm-hmm. So what is it that drives you, Jim? What, what makes you keep doing this? Obviously, you've had a few businesses in the past and you're still going. So what, what is it that keeps you going? It's the fun and yeah. it's also the challenge. Uh, I, I love what I do. I look forward every single day when I wake up, make my coffee, press the button on the coffee that my wife's prepared the night before. And I go into my office and I start looking uh, on the Internet at the sports pages or Yahoo or wherever and trying to find up something clever you know, for, uh, for a blog or for a potential chapter in a book mm-hmm. or for a future podcast. So I love sports. I love the written word. I love being creative. I love humor. And I also love truth. I like Mike uh, sometimes puts out some posts that are, I think, pretty poignant. Mm-hmm. And they address not necessarily uh, or they, they address the, ba- the bad behavior of a character. They won't necessarily, you know, um, excoriate an individual. But Mike will look to ask the question or proffer the argument or cite s- different stats or facts that maybe other sportscasters have avoided or they just uh, toss softballs at an athlete for his boorish behavior. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Mike, you know, he looks to delve into that a little bit further. He likes to address the truth. And that's another thing that prompts me and motivates me. Mm -hmm. And do you spend a lot of time working on Mike? Is it it quite time consuming for you? It's my full-time gig. Mm -hmm. I can work seven days a week and I don't consider it work because it's something that I'm passionate about and something that I love. Mm, your passion certainly But to answer comes your through. question, yeah, every day I do something uh, when it comes to Mike. Even if I'm driving, I always have a scratch pad, you know, on the, the seat next to me in my car. You know, if I go out for a walk, you know, we live in Florida. We go for walks on the beach, per, you know, a couple times a month. You know, I'll take a scratch pad and I'll put it in my, uh, in my pocket. And mm-hmm. if I'm walking and I get a, an idea or I get motivated or you know, something just strikes me, I write it down. And then I go back home, get on the computer and try and bring that to life. Mm -hmm. A true creator. So yes, absolutely. Thank you. So how do you relax when you're not working in your business, even though you work seven days a week, potentially? And obviously you don't see the, 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 you must be, you must completely get out of it sometimes. So what do you get up to? Yes, we are very fortunate in that my wife and I have lived in Florida for 33 years. Mm -hmm. We live in the Tampa Bay area on the beautiful Gulf Coast. So we've got, you know, gorgeous beaches less than 15 minutes from our house. Uh, I play basketball three times a week. Uh, I am 58 years old, so I need to uh, tell you when I do play, I play slowly, Mm -hmm. but I'm still out there. I'm breaking a sweat. I lace them up with my friends, you know, talk a lot of junk, (laughs) you know, have fun and get a workout. And I think that's one of the things that keeps me healthy and keeps me motivated. And plus, being around my basketball buddies, I get a lot of ammunition and I got a, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, information that I could utilize in future blogs or in future chapters in my books because mm-hmm. my buddies are all sports fanatics and, you know, Mike can't see everything. He could see a lot, mm-hmm. but, you know, he piggybacks on comments that other people have made and, you know, he, he tries to incorporate that, me, namely me, tries to incorporate that in blogs and in chapters in my books. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a lot of fun. So do you have any an entrepreneurial role models? Yes. Uh, you know, one guy I love is Steve Jobs. Everybody loves him. And I, I love, yeah. you know, some of the, um, you know, when you look at his life in hindsight now, uh, some of the things that he said that, you know, just follow what you're passionate about and keep on doing it and knowing that eventually it's going to get you someplace and it's going to make sense in what you're doing because you've been diligent, you've been wise, you've uh, been passionate about what you're doing, that you're eventually, you know, going to be able to get to that destination. And then when you arrive at that destination, you'll look back and you'll say, oh, wow, look at all those things I did and how they all helped contribute to my journey and where I have eventually, you know, found myself. Mm -hmm. 
So he would probably be, you know, my number one role model that I look to and I say, that guy was just a brilliant visionary. Oh, now, in no way, shape or form do I think I'm going to create or, uh, you know, uh, uh, the iPhone or the iPad or the Mac like Steve Jobs was, in, Jobs was instrumental in creating. Mm -hmm. But I just admire and respect the man's brilliance. And Pixar pictures. Well, he didn't create that, but he obviously developed it, didn't he, as well? So Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so speaking of journeys, I thought what I want to do now is, are you, can you take your mind back to the time before you were an entrepreneur? And I'm going to ask you some questions about that time because I think there's some things I'd like to find out. So what difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business or started on the journey as an entrepreneur? What, was there anything that stopped you or you had to overcome? It's always trying to find the right time, the right set of circumstances, the right situation, the right, you know, number of dollars or pounds in your bank account. Uh, I think I, I looked at that uh, as, you know, potential stumbling block before, you know, I ventured off to do things on my own. And I, and I bet a lot of people, um, you know, they have the same hesitation. Mm -hmm. they, they say, well, I'll do it when, you know, my mm -hmm. kids are off to college or I'll do it when I get enough money in my savings account, or I'll do it when, uh, you know, I could be further along in the development of my character. Now, I'll, I'm not advocating somebody do something, you know, outrageous and stupid, but I am, um, you know, encouraging people that why wait, you mm -hmm. know, start doing something now, you know, write down a plan, uh, you know, set yourself some type of goals mm -hmm. and begin following your passion and begin, you know, the first couple steps on your journey today, they don't have to be jumping off a cliff, but they could be positive steps in the right direction by doing something tangible and making a, a commitment to yourself, you know, internally that, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow this. And these are the goals that I've set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some great advice there. So did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your first business? Exactly what I just said. Do I have enough money yeah. in, in my bank account? Mm. And fortunately, we did. But I just wanted a, a much bigger, much bigger cushion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do I really have the moxie, you know, to be able to uh, live up to what uh, I was going to be boldly proclaiming that I've created the first ever animated brand that will eventually transcend all sports? So they were the doubts. But mm -hmm. then I think I, I quickly overcame them. And fortunately... You know, my partner was also my wife, who's my mm -hmm. closest friend and a woman that I have incredible respect for. And, you know, she was always there to buoy me with support and also to set me right when maybe I was becoming too negative or doubting myself or lacking in some confidence. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Was there any? Yeah, one big mistake. I felt like I had to rely on some other people to do things that I could inevitably do myself. And yeah. they were big financial mistakes, too, because I uh, we hired, I shouldn't say I, we hired uh, a very successful uh, sports agency in the New York metro area that had incredible ties to, you know, the major sports networks that new sponsorship, that new sports marketing. Mm -hmm. And they also represented some very well-known names within the sports industry. And we paid them a handsome monthly retainer to do some things that I could have very quickly found out how to do and become successful at myself. Mm. Yeah. And what, what are some of the things that you did before you started your business that would be helpful tips for some of the listeners who haven't yet taken that first step on the entrepreneur's way? I would say know what you're really good at and know where you need it. You, you will need help. Mm -hmm. uh, like in my case, uh, even though I was in the technology business, my wife and I owned a very successful computer sales agency where we brokered computer parts for a number of years. Even though I was in the technology sector, I wasn't really technology profi tech, tech proficient. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did is we attended a lot of meetups, networking events, you know, daily conferences just to learn the skills that we needed in order to be successful in the digital space. And then also just knowing that it's okay not to do everything yourself and to hire those people 
on work for hire agreements where you pay them for the work, but they have no future claim to anything that you're doing or will be paid for in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the things that uh, I would I would strongly suggest you know to would be entrepreneurs know how to go to get the right information and surround yourself with the right team of people that will work with you and also the right team of advisors that could speak truth and maybe correction uh, into your life so that they can help you navigate away from pitfalls that may be forthcoming because you didn't have necessarily the experience to see that, but some of your board of advisors or whatever, you know, had lived through that or had known how to circumvent it in the past. Mm. So, Jim, what I'd like to do now is is talk about your entrepreneurial journey. So from the time you've created your business and the first thing I'd like to talk about is culture in business. So is do you believe culture is important from the beginning in a business? I totally do. A hundred percent concur. Mm-hmm. In the previous businesses my wife and I had and in the business that we have now, and I recognize it's only the two of us, but we believe everywhere we go, we need to have fun and we need to display professionalism and always treat people, communicate with people in a collaborative spirit. Because if you think that you know everything, chances are very good you don't. And what you don't know is going to bite you if you don't you know, have the humility and the understanding that you can learn from others. Um, so as far as a culture in our tiny little company now and our much bigger companies that we had in the past, it's definitely having fun at what you do because if you love what you do, if you're happy in what you do, uh, you're just going to be that much more productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, always have an openness to learn from others and look to collaborate. And, you know, it's like there's so many ways to describe like the paying forward process. But we believe when we collaborate with others is that eventually it might not be that day, that week, that month. But eventually someone is going to collaborate with us that we weren't seeking, but uh, they're going to help us along our road and uh, along our journey. Mm. Yeah, very good. So knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? I would say how to utilize technology even better. It's uh, you know certain things on Twitter instead of doing so many things manually, having uh, to use you know Twello or some of the other things to get my tweets out there mm-hmm. uh, more regularly and to have them scheduled out. Uh, Auto responders, you know, I don't necessarily utilize technology uh, when it comes to. Uh, you know, those people that respond to mailing lists or, or other things. I try to respond to everything, but I, I know that I could be a lot more efficient and utilize technology. And that's one of our goals for me and my wife this year is to utilize, utilize technology better mm-hmm. uh, to our advantage. Mm-hmm. So that would be, you know, the number one thing is, you know, fully embracing technology and where it where it's relevant in our business, utilizing that to uh, create efficiencies. Mm-hmm. And how much does gut feeling influence your decisions in your business? Because I'm a creator and and uh, developing creative content for my character, gut feeling is paramount. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I I can't say a hundred percent because obviously. I want to go with my gut, but I want to be well-researched. I want to be accurate. I want to be truthful. I want to be impactful. Uh, but I go with my gut. That's, that's what inspires me. When, I, when something, you know, I, I, I just feel excited about something that I know I need to write about it and I need to develop that content and put it out there through the voice of my Mike character. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds very interesting. So, Mike, so Jim, I've got you've got me saying Mike now. Yeah, that's okay, everybody does it. <laughs> Jim, life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And I, I certainly believe that the only constant in life is change, or one of the only constants is change. How do you try to keep up with change, or how have you done over the years? Well, with technology, you know, things change radically. So being an entrepreneur 
and recognizing that uh, technology is intrinsic in our success is my wife and I look to go to as many meetups or like e-marketing type uh, groups, whether they're over, you know, coffee and bagel in the morning or drinks at night at, uh, you know, at a restaurant that's got a back room where people, you know, share uh, their stories. And, you know, that way you could be on the cusp of changes that are taking technologically. Mm -hmm. As far as what's going on in the world of sports, because that's what Mike reports on, is, you know, is watching the games. It's uh, reading, you know, ESPN and Yahoo and Fox Sports, NBC Sports, US Today Sports. And, you know, just disciplining yourself to know that there's always going to be something new. There's going to be changes. Expect it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you need to be on the front side of the wave and, you know, obviously you can't predict it, but you can expect the change to take place and you need to put yourself in a position to be able to glean as much and learn as much about the change that is taking place so that like in my personal case, I can report on it correctly. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership or motivation? And can you tell us why you have chosen it? I can't say that I have one specific individual book, but I used to be a voracious reader of books and of biographies of reading about great men, you know, whether there were, you know, sports heroes like a, a Will Chamberlain or a Babe Ruth yeah. or business icons like uh, or visionaries like, uh, you know, Steve Jobs or even Nikola Tesla. So what I always look to do, I, I just don't want to rest all my, you know, future on one particular thing. So in this case, I kind of shy away when people ask me the question, what is your favorite book? I could say biographies as a genre would be my favorite type of book. And I try and glean and collect as much relevant information about people's stories that apply to my life, my vision, my business uh, that I could personally utilize in my journey. So you use the, the biographies to sort of get motivation and ideas from is that what you say yeah love biographies everybody's got a story yeah, everybody's absolutely. got a story and no one skated their way you know immediately overnight to success they've all you know zigged and zagged fallen down a few times got up back got up again and just followed after what they were passionate about yeah. uh, towards their eventual goal people always forget that though don't they they always think yeah. that those people have always been instantly successful and they don't see that journey and the hardship that they've got had to go through before they got there. Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your knowledge in the time when you may be doing other things such as driving or when you are at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you've not already signed up, you will qualify. Jim, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to fast forward into the future and just ask you a few questions about that. So what one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? I would utilize uh, a percentage of the revenues to uh, be able to start some type of a foundation that would equip educate and encourage younger entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that had, you know, great ideas, uh, however, didn't know how to go about bringing what they had created to fruition. Mm. Because I'm very grateful that so many people have reached out to me and helped me, you know, in my life, and I'd want to give back and I'd mm -hmm. want to help those people that maybe didn't have the resources uh, that were available to me and I, I want to be able to supply them to others. Mm, that's fantastic. I mean, that's what I'm trying to achieve with the entrepreneur way. I'm trying to give people the, you know, to get to understand what other entrepreneurs are doing and to get ideas from them. So a sort of a similar vision with this. What skill, if you were excellent at it, would help you most to double your business? Uh <laughs> Being an animator, animation is really expensive. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't double my bill business. It would uh, it would grow it probably twenty five fifty fold because uh, when we first brought our character out, uh, we were piloted by a major network, but we were here in the United States 
but it was too premature. We weren't ready for prime time. I didn't know uh, how little our property at that time was worth because we didn't have uh, the dig- digital metrics to support the, uh, the inevitable value of what we know that the property is worth today and will be. And we were paying almost $200 per finished second mm-hmm. for animation. So that's the, the writing, the storyboarding, uh, the mastering of the sound, and the incredibly great uh, animation that was done. Mm-hmm. So if I were an animator and I could bring to life uh, all the different things that uh, Mike could be doing, uh, you know, on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer, or on the big screen, I think uh, our business would explode. Wow. So now zooming completely out and looking completely into the future, in five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? That Jim Sweeney had vision. Uh, People did not necessarily uh, embrace his vision immediately, but he was persistent. He had integrity. He was passionate. The content he put out was excellent. Um, And he just stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And then he aligned himself with the right people that eventually uh, grasped his vision. They collaborated together and they developed an international brand. Wow, fantastic. Right, we're now at the part of the show where you share three golden nuggets with us. So, Jim, what's your favorite quote and how have you applied it? It's the Nike quote, just do it. Uh, <laughs> you had asked me earlier, you know, what prevents people from getting started? And it's uh, maybe a lack of confidence or not thinking they had enough money or uh, not thinking the situation in their Life was the right time uh, to do what they were doing. And Nike, you know, had that great quote, just do it for many, many years. And my wife and I embrace that. We Mm -hmm. just go for it. We do it. We just don't think about it. We don't write about it. We don't ponder it. Mm -hmm. Sure, we're not going to, you know, uh, just jump like off a cliff, as I referenced earlier. But we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it with a plan. We're going to go for it with, you know, uh, uh, some reasonable uh, ways in which to follow after our passion, but we're not going to sit around on our hands. We're going to go for it. Yeah, you seem very clear on what you want with this. Oh, it's, that's yes, excellent. sir. <laughs> and do you have any favorite online resources that you'd like to share that would be useful to our listeners? Google. I Google a lot. I Google, uh, obviously, to um, uh, corroborate the veracity of certain things that, that I write. I Google, you know, how to properly utilize this plugin for my WordPress website. Uh, I Google my competition or those that I think uh, are competitive writers or competitive, you know, sports book authors. Uh, You can't underestimate Google. It's an incredibly valuable tool. Mm. And I Google things multiple times a day. Okay. And what is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? If you're passionate about something, you believe in it, you can envision it, but maybe others don't. Don't let that preclude you from taking the first step Mm -hmm. and put together some type of a plan and also have a couple people. It could be one, it could be five, but people in your life that will speak truthfully to you. They won't butter your bread, shine your apple. They won't tell you, wow, that's great. You should do more of that. You know, they should say, that's terrible, man. Mm -hmm. You should find somebody else to help you with that. Or you, you need to look at it completely differently. And I think having trustworthy advisors that will speak truthfully and candidly to you is some of the best advice that I could ever offer to any other entrepreneur. What about coaches? Have you got any opinions on having coaches when you're in business? I'm fortunate in that I work with uh, my wife of, Mm. you know, almost 35 years who is very successful in corporate America here in Florida. And she's also an extremely successful new media personality. And she's not a sports fan. So every time before I go to publish something, uh, you know, one of my 38 books, 
I'll go to her and she is my editor. Then she edits it again and again and again. And she makes it such that anybody could understand it. And it resonates with them because it needs to resonate with her first. Mm. And I think that's very valuable to have a wife that's also your coach. Mm -hmm. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Jim's favorite resource or his favorite book, you can find the links on Jim's show notes page. Just go to theentrepreneurway.com and search for Jim or Jim Sweeney in the search box. Jim, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? I just like to thank all those people out there. And I don't know all of them that have downloaded our free books, listened to our podcast, you know, read our blogs, you know, commented under a pseudonym, you know, to uh, things that I've written in the past. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank the people that have taken the time to respond to me, you know, even if it's a, a comment in which they don't agree. I just appreciate the fact that they've taken the time, you know, to read what, what I've done because it is my business. It's my you know, vocation as well as my avocation. And mm -hmm. I, I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim, it's been an absolute honor having you on the show. You really have provided some useful insight into the entrepreneur way. Well, thank you. I, I've loved being a part of the show and I love answering questions because people have spoken candidly uh, and uh, encouraging, candid, encouraging words into my life. And, you know, I would love to be able to reciprocate doing that for others. Well, you've certainly done it today. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.